I don't think Flex loses muscle to make 212. What's up, desktopers? Xavier Wills here for Desktop Bodybuilding, and we are back with another video. And today we're discussing James Flex Lewis, seven time 212 Olympia champion, and if he can be the greatest bodybuilder of all time. I've got the reasons why that can potentially be the case. Also, we've got a new photo that was released by his coach, Neil Hill, just recently, and how he's currently looking. Also, Guy Stanino, actually a friend of James Flex Lewis, has some really interesting comments about him making weight for 212 that was on Food Abiad's body building and bollocks podcast we got all that plus much more coming up in this video guys i hope you enjoy it What's up, desktopers? Now, before we get into this video, I want to encourage you guys, if you'd like and appreciate this content, please give me a thumbs up, smash that like button, also subscribe and hit the notification bell button. That way you'll be notified of every video that goes up from myself, Xavier Wills, at Desktop Bodybuilding. We've got bodybuilding news, interviews, contest previews and predictions, plus much more. So please do subscribe and you'll be notified of all that good stuff. So let's get into this one. So James Flex Lewis, I believe he can potentially be the greatest bodybuilder of all time. Now, when we say greatest bodybuilder of all time, people are subjective about that. They might say Arnold's the greatest ever because he's had such a big impact, but obviously his physique wouldn't match up against guys like Ronnie Coleman and Jay Cutlers and things like that. And then some people think greatest bodybuilder of all time by how much you know impact plus how they looked on stage plus how many Olympias they had. So you could look at guys like Ronnie Coleman. You can still look at guys like Arnold. You can look at guys like Lee Haney, how he has a positive impact and won you know, the equal most Olympias of all time. And then you can look at guys like Jay Cutler, how he's still representing the sport and some people call him him the greatest of all time. So it can be very subjective. And Flex Lewis has been obviously extremely successful in the 212 division, winning seven titles at the Olympia, which is just an amazing feat. So he's been absolutely sensational there. But people forget that he's actually had 20 212 Pro wins, at least by what muscle memory records. And, you know, 20 wins is pretty incredible, even in the 212 class. And I don't think anyone would have ever done that before. And now you've got guys like Dexter Jackson, who I believe has 29 or 30 Pro wins right now. I mean, Flex Lewis could catch that, albeit between Pro, um, you know, Open Pro wins and 212 wins. That's definitely a possibility if he, you know, decides to not only do the Olympia every year, but also decides to jump in some of these smaller shows, maybe run the gamut and do like the Arnold Classic and the Arnold Classic Australia and a few of these other comps. And Flexibles can definitely bunch up a couple of wins and, you know, put himself up there as one of the greatest of all times. Now, for Flex to be dubbed as one of the greatest of all time, you know, he does need to, you know, open Olympia wins, which I think is a distinct possibility based off his most recent photo that you can see on the screen right now where, where um, Coach Neil Hill actually posted that up because he is looking absolutely ridiculous. He's added weight to his previous physique and just looks really, really good and healthy. And I think that, you know, Flex traditionally grows into shows as Neil Hill said. Um, in the past, it was more about, you know, maintaining or slightly growing into the show because he did have that 212 restriction. But now it's about just growing, getting as big as freaky as possible. And we know he always does bring conditioning. Whether the 212 was forcing him to get in condition or if he'd bring conditioning anyway. I know when he did do open in the past, he did always bring conditioning as well. So Neil Hill posted up this photo and this is what he had to say about it. He said, so we've been keeping a pretty uh, food pretty low over the past eight weeks, allowing Flex's body to really rest up and his digestive system to be super cleansed before we start our full proper off season just two weeks from now. Then at 14 weeks out from the show day, we'll start our full pre-contest prep where uh, his body will become hyper-responsive to start growing into the show. No more making weight limits. Now it's all about bringing some extraordinary, we well, said some extraordinary to the stage. I think it means something extraordinary to the stage. Uh, he's already 12 pounds up and leaner than past preps at this point. It's been very positive time away from the stage for team Y3T athlete Flex Lewis. We are looking forward to bring a new exciting look to Las Vegas in the 2020 Mr. Olympia contest. So super exciting uh, by Neil Hill there. And Flex really does look very, very good. And the fact that he's actually reduced his food recently over the past eight weeks, as Neil Hill said, and he still looks like this, 
that's pretty damn crazy. So I think that Flex Lewis is definitely one of the guys that can go into this Olympia and potentially challenge a Brandon Curry because some people may say Flex is too small, uh, you know, too short or too small or whatever. But you've got to remember that Flex is only really about probably one and a half inches to two inches shorter than current Mr. Olympia, Brandon Curry. Dexter Jackson's known as being about five foot six. Flex Lewis is about five foot five. And we know Dexter Jackson has an Olympia title. And I don't think anyone's saying Dexter's too short. Uh, but maybe that one inch does make a decent amount of difference. But, you know, he really is, you know, looking fantastic right now. And I just wanted to point this out that I was looking up Flex Lewis's height. And most people say five foot five around the internet. I saw 166 centimeters, which is actually just under five foot five. But I've stood next to Flex and I think he's definitely a good, you know, inch, but probably two inches taller than like a Lee Priest who was dubbed as five foot four. Uh, Generation 9 actually have him a bio of Flex Lewis on their website and it says his height is six foot one and his competition weight is between 256 to 300 pounds. So <laughs> I don't know, Gener Generation 9 isn't doing himself justice by having that on there whatsoever. But let's look back and see if actually Flex Lewis can win the Olympia because he's faced guys like Hardy Chupin. Now, he did that in 2017 at the Korean Pro, and many, many people had Hardy Chupin actually beating Flex Lewis at that comp. Flex Lewis did end up winning that. I know a lot of Hardy's fans went absolutely crazy after this show and were, you know, really against Flex Lewis because, you know, in reality, by the photos I've seen, perhaps Hardy should have won, but Flex Lewis did have that weight restriction on him, as Hardy did as well. And Hardy now is probably a little bit heavier, maybe 10 pounds heavier as well. So I'm interested to see how these two would actually match up against each other. But people have made a case. And I've even, you know, said, you know, if Hardy Chupin had won last year's Olympia, I wouldn't be mad about it. I mean, Brandon Curry, I thought, was the deserving winner. But had they been compared a little bit more even and just stood side by side a lot, then I think that maybe we might be saying that perhaps Hardy Chupin could have been the 2019 Mr. Olympia. And the fact that he could have won the Mr. Olympia, and I think Flex Lewis is going to be around where Hardy Chupin's at when he steps on stage. You know, maybe he could be better. That's a distinct possibility because he has the, you know, the really pleasing shape and those granite glutes and just, he's just got some freaky sort of roundness and just a beautiful physique, I think. And it's a nicer shape, I suppose, than a Hardy Chupin. The Flex Lewis could be better than Hardy Chupin. And if he's better than Hardy Chupin, then he's a legit Olympia contender. And he's only 36 years of age, which is a distinct advantage over those other guys as well. Because out of, you know, Brandon Curry, uh, William Bonac, you got you know, all those other guys as well. I believe he's the youngest out of a lot. And he's still got seven Olympia, 212 Olympia titles under his belt. So if Flex Lewis was to win an Olympia in the next couple of years, and just say, you know, if you, once you win the Olympia, you are then the favorite going forward. So if he wins an Olympia, you know, just say the age of 38, and he runs off four Olympia titles, Imagine if he had four open Olympia titles and seven 212 titles. I mean, he's got to go down as one of the greatest of all time because I assume he's going to get other wins along the way. Perhaps as the most pro wins between the 212 and the open class of all time, he can be an all-time great. Now, something I found very, very interesting listening to a recent episode of Food Abiad's uh, Bodybuilding and Bollocks podcast, which had uh, Guy Sistanino on there. And Guy Sistanino is known to be a friend of Flex Source as well. Now, he talked about Flex Source never actually struggling to make weight for the 212, at least from what he's seen. And he even calls Flex Source out on it. Um, to his face about, you know, saying that he's way heavier, you know, leading up to the show and he could compete way heavier. So I'm going to play that little bit of footage now. I'll say this, I'll, and I'll say this because I've said this to Flex before. Um, and so it's not, a, and I've said it right to him. I don't think Flex loses muscle to make 212. You don't? I'm going to say that, no, because when you weigh in at seven o'clock at night and you step on a scale in shorts and a t-shirt at 211.7 pounds at seven o'clock at night, you're not struggling to make weight. That means you woke up in the morning at like 2.06. 206. Yeah, and you're already pretty good, yeah. And it's 7 o'clock at night. So how can you – like, that's why, like, I didn't cut Ben off before. But listen, Flex is one of my best fucking friends. But I've said it to him. He always – I always get on his case about his fucking weight. Because yeah, he yeah. always fucking throws out numbers to me. And I'm like, no way, dude. Well, that's why I was – you? How can you weigh in at 7 o'clock at night? Every bodybuilder in the 212 does it. They all do it. Barely made weight. I've never done it because – I weigh in at seven o'clock and I weigh in at two Oh seven. I have a pair of mesh shorts on no underwear and a light t-shirt. And I'm like two Oh seven, two Oh between two Oh six and two Oh eight. Every time never have to struggle because I wake up in the morning. I'm like two Oh five, two Oh four. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm not struggling. Like, if the struggle. So, very interesting comments there by Guy Sistanino, who's a fellow 212 competitor as well. Well, obviously, Flex Source was a former 212 competitor, but they did compete, obviously, on the same stage together and whatnot as well. So, 
I'm interested to see what you guys think about Guy Cicinino's comments and if you think Flex Lewis can actually be the greatest bodybuilder of all time. Let me know in the comments below. And also, I just want to say on Guy Cicinino's comments that maybe Flex was overcautious about weighing in at the right weight. Because we know like, if you're stressing about if you're going to make weight and different scales weigh people slightly differently by a couple of pounds that maybe he just wanted to make sure he's well under that weight just so he didn't stress because I know if I was doing it, I'd be paranoid. I'd weigh myself on one scales. I mean, sometimes you weigh yourself on other ones, they're two pounds different. So just to stick up for Flex in that way, because I think Flex, by his photos, I think he probably was 10 pounds over, 12 pounds over, you know, only weeks out of the 212 Olympia at times. And I think he just had to suffer down to get under the weight limit. So let me know what you think about that. And if you think he'd be the greatest of all time in the comments below. Low. And guys, thank you so much for all the love and support. And if you do want to support this channel, please head to hostile.com. It's H-O-S-S-T-I-L-E.com. Enter Zave 10, XAV 10, and you'll save yourself 10% off what I think is the best supplements out there and apparel as well. The blacked out Flex Fit Cap. The apparel is just insane. The supplements are crazy. Just look at the ingredients list for yourselves and you'll see the quality there as well. And also I'm going to be having my own channel t-shirts come out very, very soon. Working on that currently because I do have obviously over 10,000 subscribers so I can set that up. So make sure you keep an eye out for those as well. And that's it for another video for Xavier Wills. And if you, oh, also, if you want to be notified of all these videos, make sure you hit the notification bell button when you do subscribe and you'll be notified of all those videos. So that's it for another video for Xavier Wills Desktop Bodybuilding. We are out.